What's going on guys? It's your boy Big here Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on Twitter, TikTok, the community post. You already know the vibes. And uh if this looks different and it sounds different, of course, you know, it, it, it's 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 a little different setup because um this is your full gear review, but I uh <laughs> agreed to work over last night. And that was the same night of Full Gear, and I kind of forgot. I don't know if that's more on me or more on AEW, but yeah. But of course, I did check out the pay per view while I was working. Um, and if there's stuff I missed, if I don't get any details right, it's, it's because I was working, man. Get, cut me a break, man. Cut me a break. But I couldn't not give you guys a Full Gear review because Full Gear was it was a good show. It wasn't bad, it wasn't anything overly offensive, it wasn't the greatest thing ever, but it was still good, man. I enjoyed it, I had fun with it, and one of the main things I had fun with, I, I couldn't miss this. I didn't see anything else from the pre-show, but I had to see this. I had to see the match that we've all been waiting for, the, the match of the year candidate, if you ask me, and that's between QT Marshall <laughs> and Big Boom AJ alongside with the um, Big Justice and the Rizzler. And let me tell y'all something about this Rizzler kid. I don't know much about the Costco guys, but it, for, from what I'm seeing, the Rizzler is the most popular of the group. <laughs> and I just found out that, that the Rizzler isn't AJ's kid. Like He's just a kid that is, is a fan of the Costco guys and he just hangs out with them. But the Rizzler, this kid is over. He's over than a lot of wrestlers that are on television weekly, right? That's AEW, WWE. He's over. Like, he got a huge pop. Pop so big that the Big Show, he pulled up on commentary. He said, I got to see this. And and as far as the match goes between QT and um, AJ, it was good. It was good. It was pretty well worked. Um, they told a good story, you know. Typical heel baby face, you know what I'm saying? Uh, QT, I'm not the biggest QT fan, but he did his thing, man. He, he held the match down. And AJ... You can tell, man, this 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 dude knows what he's doing. He, he, he is a wrestler. Um, the punches look good. He, the um, spine busters, power slams, the power boom. <laughs> Everything looked good. <laughs> and one, one of my favorite spots from the match is when um, <laughs> Big Justice rolled in the ring and hit a spear on QT Marshall. And you would have thought that Roman Reigns himself pulled up and speared QT Marshall the way the crowd popped. The only thing that was missing was the ooh, ah. but but Big Justice hit a spear on um, QT. Um, AJ hit the power boom, and he won, man. It was fun. It was a fun match, man. The build wasn't anything inoffensive. It was good. It was good. But as far as the rest of the show goes, it started off with um, what was the first match? It was it was the um, the Fatal Four Way Tag Team match. And I don't really remember too much. The only thing I remember is Private Party got the old theme back. That made me happy. Another thing was uh, Mass Caster is not liked. <laughs> and I think he's from Jersey. So the fact that this man's getting booed out of his home si his own state, that's crazy. They're all chanting F you, F you Max, F you Caster. He was acting like a dickhead to um, Anthony Bowens. Um, the Acclaim, they weren't vibing like they normally do. So they're doing a good job of teasing this breakup between the Acclaim. Um, Private Party ended up getting the win. They retained their titles. You know, no harm, no foul. Uh, the next match was between MJF and Roddy. This was a match I thought it would be good, and it was. Nothing uh, really too memorable. It was it was a good match. Um, MJF was working over Roddy's arm and hand, and he ended up making Roddy tap out with the Salt of the Earth. And then after the match, uh, MJF broke <laughs> Roddy's arm. With a steel chair and Adam Cole and the Kingdom come out. Too little, too late. Too late, Luthor. And then you have something between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Because Kyle was trying to tell Adam, like, look, this is what happened, man. Your friends are fighting your battles for you. I told you to leave this stuff alone, man. And now Roddy's hurt. So now you see something between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And I really don't care about this feud. I really don't care about the Adam Cole MGF dynamic. I, I don't care, but, you know, it is what it is. So the next match was between Mercedes and Chris Statlander. And I gotta say that this was probably one of Mercedes' best matches in AEW outside of the Stephanie Vacker and Willow match. This was like up there with those. Like, cause she hasn't really had that good of a run in AEW. Uh, 
not really the best, but you know, it is what it is. But this match itself was good. And on um, um and they were saying that uh Mercedes told Camille to stay in the back. And I'm like, I right, bet. So they're still teasing that breakup. But uh, Mercedes ended up getting the win, and this was this was good, man. This was an overall fun match. Um, what was the next match? The next match was between uh, Hangman and Switchblade. And out of all my predictions, this was the only match I got wrong because I just knew in my heart and in my soul that Hangman was going to end up winning the match, and he didn't. I was wrong, 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 wrong. Switchblade Jay White ended up getting the win, and I'm not mad at that because I like Jay White. And then after the match. Hangman, he was looking pissed off. He was looking really upset. So much so that he ended up at- attacking Jay White after the match. And I think he attacked um, Chris- Christopher Daniels as well. And this is kind of going to lead into the main event too. So we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes. But um, I think after this was the champagne celebration with Mina and Mariah. And a lot of people were thinking that Tony Storm was going to pull up. That didn't happen, but what ended up happening was something I felt should have happened a while ago. Like this, this whole angle should have happened already, and this segment itself should have been a match, in my opinion. But what ended up happening was, you know, Mina was toasting to Mariah. She was saying, "Oh, Mar- Mariah is the greatest. She's awesome. Wu Tang is for the children." And they toast, and then you know, Mina's celebrating, but in the background, you see Mariah with a champagne bottle and it looked like she was about to bust Mina upside the head and then Mina had eyes in the back of the head she knew what was coming and she ducked and dodged and she ended up hitting a spin kick and breaking the bottle (laughs) and then she speared um Mariah off the off the um off the stage through a table and I'm like I get what they're going for I get it because I think what was gonna what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have Mariah saying I'm not stupid I have social media. I saw you in Japan hanging out with my op. I saw you hanging out with Tony Storm. I, I've been planning to do this for a long time, but you were always in Japan, so I couldn't get you that way I wanted to get you. So this is going to lead to the match that we should have got tonight or last night, and that's going to lead to the return of Tony Storm. So if they tell the story right, it could be something good, but I highly doubt it. So, yeah, it is what it is. But we, the next match we get is between Kyle Fletcher and Will By God Osprey. And Will Ospreay's gear was pretty dope, man. He came out with the Punisher gear. He came out with the all black. And he had a new Titantron and everything. And then Kyle Fletcher comes out. He has a new theme. And I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. <laughs> but the thing I noticed from his interest gear was he had a crown on. And that and that crown was too damn small. Like, they could have got this man a bigger crown. Because you could tell like it was really tight on his head and messed up his haircut. <laughs> that was pretty funny. But what wasn't funny was how good this match was because you know these two are like best friends or former best friends and like brothers and that was a real story they told because you know Kyle, Kyle knows Will Osprey like the back of his hand and you know Will was out for blood so they're trying to kill each other um Kyle kept dropping Will Osprey on his neck with um brain busters and pile drivers and Kyle ended up winning the match with a, a top rope brain buster yeah you can see like um, Will Ospreay like twitching his arm and everything like you couldn't feel anything in his arm so it was a good match man Kyle Fletcher good for you man good for you the next match was for the TNT championship <laughs> this was between Jack Perry and uh Daniel Garcia and this match was boring bro like this match was really boring I don't really remember a lot that happened um the only thing I care about was the fact that Daniel Garcia is the new TNT champion so you know good for him so the next match was between um, Kanosuke to Takeshita and Ricochet and this was a match that was announced like on social media it wasn't announced on Dynamite so I couldn't do it and um, put it in my predictions video but I figured this match was going to happen and Takeshita ended up getting the win the match was pretty good man I, no real complaints in there um, but a match I was really 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 good looking forward to was between Big Bobby Lashley and whose house? Swerve's house and speaking of whose house so you know how how um Chris Nana does the Who's House chants. So they was doing the Who's House Swerve's House chants, but people were also chanting "We Hurt People." So it was doing Who's House and We Hurt People chants. And every time you would hear Who's House chants, those We Hurt People chants would start getting louder and louder. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And as far as the match goes, man, like they have this new moniker for Swerve of him being the most dangerous man in AEW. And they kept saying, oh, he's the most dangerous man in AEW. And this match really showcased that. 
And um, you had a swerve hitting a swerve stomp on Bobby Lashley through the announcer's table. Um, it's a Bobby Lashley match, so you already know you're going to get that spear through the barricade spot off rip. A um, whole bunch of power, a whole bunch of speed, man. It was a good match, man. I had a lot of fun with it. Bobby Lashley ended up getting the win with a spear, and then he made Swerve sort of pass out with the Hurt Lock. And then after the match, the Hurt Business, the Hurt Syndicate attacked Chris Nana. So, you know, good for them. Good for Smoke Dizzle. Good for West Side Gun. Boom, 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 boom. Also, We Hurt People. So now this leads us to our main event. Speaking of We Hurt People, between John Mosley and Orange Cassidy. And, yeah, out of the three matches. Out of the three matches that swear, uh, um, that John Mosley and Orange Cassidy had, this was probably the weakest, but it was bloody as hell. Like you had um, John Mosley digging his nails in Orange Cassidy's back, and you can just, like, just see the scratch marks. It was so bad that it, Orange Cassidy's back was bleeding. I'm like, yo! But yeah, man, the match was, was what it was. You had Willow return. She returned and attacked um, Marina Shafir. And there was even one spot where I thought Orange Cassidy might have won. Because he hit um, John Mosley in the head with the briefcase, and it was a real close two, like a real close um, count. But John Mosley kicked out. Will you to rent interference? You know, cost Orange Cassidy the match. John Mosley won. After the match, you see uh, John Mosley and um, Will you to point chemicals in <laughs> in Orange Cassidy's face, and then out of nowhere, Hangman shows up. He hits uh, Will you in the head with a steel chair. He um. It looks like he's gonna attack John Mosley, and then out of nowhere, Christian pulls up. He hits the um, kill switch on uh, John Mosley, and it looks like Christian's about to uh, cash in his um, contract. But then um, Jay White pulls up. He stops both Christian and uh, uh, Hangman. So then they're all fighting. The, the Death Riders escape. They're making a run for the border. They're trying to run to their pickup truck, and then out of nowhere, fucking Darby Allen pulls up. He uh, crashes his car. It's uh, the the Death Rider mobile. They, the Death Riders had to end up stealing someone else's car, and that's how um, Full Gear is with um, with Darby Allen yelling. He's bleeding from the car accident. He's yelling at John Mosley. He's like, "Let's fucking go! Come on!" I'm like, "Yo, what the hell is happening?" And when I first saw this, I'm like, "Yo, it's a lot going on." And I heard a lot of people saying, or I saw a lot of people saying that it was overbooked, and I agree. But after having uh, a couple hours to sleep on it and think about it, it was overbooked. But I actually ended up liking it more than the more that I, had, um, that I think about it. It was cool because it sets up Darby as the next opponent for um, John Mosley. It continues a feud between Jay White and Hangman and Christian. So, you know, no harm, no foul. So, yeah, man, overall, full gear. I enjoyed it. It was a pretty good show. Um, yeah, I give it a, a boom. So with that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Of course, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. You guys take care. Peace. I'm out. Peace.